Uh, hi, I'm Sarag. Uh, and yeah, uh, I generally go to Decart My State when we break out into prayer rooms. So I'm here to talk to you guys about it. Uh, I've been coming to Shy Hack Night for like six months now. So maybe not the longest, but I've worked through Decart My State. As the name sounds, uh, we deal in the realm of climate change. We want to real uh, tell people what they can do and how they can do it uh, to like make climate change not a thing. So yeah, big bold letters. Climate change. Once again, climate change. It's here and scary. And yeah, so this is where we are. Uh, the black part is where we are right now and all of the curves are where we're going. Uh, this is for the next, up to the next century, so up to 2100. These are uh, projected increases in global temperature. And I'm sure as many of you have heard, uh, any increase by even a single degree is not good. Uh, so yeah, uh, the top one is with current policies and actions, what, uh, what happened that's targeting about 3% increase. Uh, the purple one is um, with like what, uh, like the UN and what sort of uh, targets they have. It's a two and a half percent increase, uh, degree increase. And then as we uh, go down. So this graph shows that uh, we're not out of the water. Like our current target targets, which is this one, is still going to increase degrees, uh, global average temperatures by two and a half degrees which is not acceptable. That that will lead to the apocalypse. Well, basically the apocalypse. So, but it it's not all gloom and doom. Like these top things up here, they don't have to happen. We can bend the curve down to more normal uh, temperature increases. Like if we're uh, more active in our policies, if we're better with uh, decarbonizing. So uh, our approach to climate change. We have to decarbonize. What does that mean? It means machines give off emissions. Whenever you burn fossil fuels, whenever you use natural gas, whatever, you're putting more carbon in the air, emissions. So these are like your power plants, your heaters, your boilers, your stoves, your cars. We want to get rid of that to reduce our emissions to zero. So you want to take that power plant and those cars and turn it into wind turbines or solar panels and electric vehicles. Because those are cars that won't give off, um, those are appliances that won't give off emissions. They're appliances that will help us reach our goal of being uh, net zero by 2050. So what we're doing when we're taking your furnace, turning it into a heat pump, when we're taking your uh, uh, gas guzzling car and turning it into an EV, when we take your uh, power plant and shut it down and give you some solar panels, that's called clean electrification. That's uh, the top part here. There is some other stuff, which is like your farms, like you hear that cows poop and uh, that gives off methane and all that. That does happen, but that's not as easily fixable as what we have up there with some clean electrification. So in making our site decarb this, I would decarb my state, we had three goals to break down the source of CO2 emissions by state, which is what that graph you saw on the previous page was. Uh, it is to explain what their state needs to do, which is part of what that graph is. So uh, certain states, especially those um, that are more rural, maybe not they don't, might not have any power plants. So maybe they need to focus on taking their cars and uh, making them more, uh, making getting a high percentage of electric vehicles or d depending on the state. And then the last one, is to give them specific calls of actions. Uh, people always hear that, oh, climate change is an issue, but no one really knows what should I do about climate change. And that's a that's something that we wanted to say, oh, you can do specifically this, or you can contact this person. The site's audience is the people who not only have the means, but they have the desire to do something about climate change. It's we're not trying to convince people that climate change is real. We're past that at this point. You can't convince deniers who just won't care. You have to 
actually go into, uh, you have to go into the problem with a solution. And that's what we're doing. We're giving them a solution. We take all the data we have from all the sources and we turn them into graphs. The graph on the left over there is a state breakdown. I believe, yeah, that is Illinois. So as we can see, Illinois uh, is fairly balanced, which I don't know if that's a good thing in this case, but it's fairly balanced. So maybe we need a transport would be your uh, gas cars. Maybe we need to turn those into electric vehicles. Power, your power plants. Maybe we need to become Indiana and make a bunch of wind turbines. Uh, buildings would be like your heating and your furnaces. Maybe we need to worry about that. So we wanted to show them what uh, the problems are and then how far along are we to fix them? Because you can have a bunch of power shoes and have a million solar panels. That's still a thing. So here, Illinois is kind of there for buildings, nowhere there for EVs and not really close for all the stuff. So we take all this data and we do it for every state. So on the website, you'll be able to click into any state you want, uh, any US state, sorry, Germany, uh, any US state you want and uh, be able to like learn about them and figure them out. But with this data there, you need to have stuff to do with that. So we have two calls to action mainly. The first one, the first one more obviously is to electrify your machines. So we want to take those three categories of transportation, of power, and of Building. build, buildings. That, yes. And of buildings. And we you want to actually do something. Maybe, like I said, buy an electric vehicle or get a heat pump or build solar panels. So that's one of your options. Uh, another one is to talk to your local politician because... Climate change legislation is hard to come by because lobbyists. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, get political. Uh, the climate cabinet uh, gives a lot of politicians a score on how well they are regarding climate change. And, like, you can go to the website and figure out, like, especially with um, voting, voting, yeah, elections. That's what I'm like. Elections coming up soon. You can probably find a uh, vote for people who are more likely to not hate the environment. All this is Decar My State. Today is officially the second release of Decar My State. So please go. Other than that, uh, we aren't just working on Decar My State. Uh, last July, Victor and Derek gave a talk. And since then, what's happened? The IRA passed. This is when you clap. So what's the IRA? The IRA is the Inflation Reduction Act. It got passed on uh, August 12th and is a federal law act that uh, uh, works on inflation. But among, uh, among many other things, they have uh, incentives for EVs, heat pumps, uh, electric panels, and more. So if you go to this QR code, uh, it'll be a calculator for the... Uh, IRA, you can put in some of your information, like where you live, uh, some of your income, and it'll spit out, oh, what sort of ta tax credits and incentives you will get for um, do, uh, becoming greener. So yeah, you can get money for doing something good for the environment. Uh, I'll leave the QR code up there for like three seconds. Okay. So in other news, uh, energy uh, wise, we've been... Uh, not energy wise, but we've been scraping 93,000 climate news articles. Why? Because all this data, there's a website called energynews.us, and it holds a bunch of different articles uh, that are email digests sent to uh, subscribers. And it's spread among a, a bunch of different 93,000 articles. And like, this is what an article will look like. So you've got uh, like blurbs based on like what sort of energy. Uh, topic and what they're doing all over the United States. So we're taking all this information and we're putting it into our Google Doc, uh, Google Sheet, and like tagging them with uh, uh, states and territory territories uh, in in order to figure out what like energy news trends have been over the past uh, decade. As we can see here, 
uh, since 2013, solar has consistently been the most uh, prevalent uh, category to exist. And then you've got some oil, coal, climate, climate, and that jazz. So yeah, uh, it's very interesting seeing how like how solar energy has stayed constant, but news about other stuff has like fluctuated a lot. Did some topic modeling. So that's where we take some of the blurbs that are with the um, with the website and we make it so that it uh, we figure out how they are like grouped together. So energy, the word en in this case, the word energy would uh, go with uh, clean and climate and support a lot. Going to hand it off to. Oh yeah, this is the part where I said I was going to present. So um, in addition to uh, all the things that Sarag mentioned. Um, I've been living this in my single family home in Oak Park. Uh, I've been, uh, as they say, walking the walk in addition to talking the talk. Um, so this is the, the diagram that I think uh, Strzok had on a previous slide. This is from Rewiring America. This is like what the ideal uh, you know, electrified home looks like. And uh, of course, it's like, there's a lot of hand waving. It's like, just do this and you're done, right? Uh, except it's not that simple in reality. So uh, I decided to go down this path and see what I could do. I have about a hundred year old home. Um, and we decided first thing we could do is install solar panels. So this is, this is actually the roof of my house. We actually have solar panels on our house. There's 24 of them. Uh, it it uh, um, does all of the, um, uh, uh, I think it replaces 100% of our current energy uh, uses. So that's awesome. We did happen to, um, yeah, it's kind of maybe one of those things that you maybe didn't think, oh, it's Illinois. It doesn't like get enough sun here. Yes, the sun, sun still shines in Illinois. We still get, I think the stat is like 70% the same sunlight as Arizona. So it's just like anybody who says there's not enough sunlight for this to work doesn't know what they're talking about. There is. Um, my house isn't particularly big. It just happened to have a nice flat roof on top and we could fit the enough solar panels on there. Um, so uh, did that check. That one was pretty good. Um, uh, you can also see uh, this is the, the the device that measures my solar output, and this is my electric bill. Bloop went to zero. Um, this, if you're curious, I know this isn't zero. This is fifteen dollars. It's because I still have to pay Comed fifteen dollars a month to be connected to the grid. Um, which I mean, I'll, I mean, it's kind of like lame, but also at the same time. Uh, you have to draw energy, especially as the winter months come. Like I'm not going to produce much, as much solar energy in December and January and February. Uh, and so I actually will be drawing uh, some of that energy from the grid. So I still have to be connected. I'm not like disconnected from the grid. The uh, next thing I uh, wanted to tackle, like that was easy, was installing heat pumps. Uh, and it turns out that... Um, I can't just do that because my home is super drafty. This is a blower door test uh, summary. It is super like full of bunch of numbers that and like acronyms that I don't even understand. But this is good and this is bad and I'm over here. So apparently um, this number of uh, 8.2, like a passive home is 0.5, which is basically like the amount of air that has to get is like it's just being exchanged through just like things going out, like, you know, just like when the windows open, right? Um, you want this to be like 0.5 and mine's at 8.2. So it's very, very drafty because my home is again, hundred years old. As part of this, you could see, uh, this is actually part of the blower door test. This is like someone went around with a, uh, an infrared gun and this is like different places in my house. Dark is bad. Dark means air, like warm air is going out of the house. Uh, and, uh, so I have a lot of insulating to do is what I've learned. Um, so I'm going to continue to be documenting this whole process uh, as I do it. I actually just published a blog post today documenting our solar panel process and how much it costs and how I did it and all the incentives and all that kind of stuff. And I'll uh, keep documenting as we try to do the rest of it as well. The other um, thing that uh, I'll, and before I give back to Sarag is um, Juan Pablo Velez, if anybody was here back in January when he gave his talk that actually inspired our breakout group, uh, he has since started a group called Wind Climate. And Wind Climate um, 
is a uh, basically a, a data science think tank for climate change. So that he's like bringing a bunch of volunteers, very much like inspired by the Shy Hack Night model, to do like climate modeling and doing different kinds of data processing things. And then actually just published their first report uh, last week uh, on the efficacy of the electrification um, bill that was passed in New York State. Um, so uh, this is you know, this is something that we're continuing to be um, supportive of, uh, and it, it shows us the number of different areas we've sort of branched off into. Um, you want to hit the next one? All right. And then the last thing on our talk for today is uh, we've been working with the Illinois Clean Jobs Coalition, the ICJC. Illinois Jobs Coalition, a uh, Clean Jobs Coalition is a uh, coalition of people who are working through clean jobs. Uh, they were instrumental in passing uh, CJA, the Climate and Equitable Jobs Act, which is uh, Illinois state uh, legislation that uh, basically promotes um, cleaner jobs and more equitable, uh, yeah, as it says. <laughs> uh, so since CJA's passed, uh, the number of solar projects, uh, like solar panels anywhere, has exploded from 80 megawatts to 2,000 megawatts in the past year alone. So they contacted us and asked us to make maps about um, uh, about like solar projects throughout the state. And it's very difficult because an increase 20-fold in the number of solar projects is what we want, but it's hard to track. So we did find one source, and so we're putting that together. And we are going to start geocoding and mapping all 33,000 new solar projects in Illinois. So as I said before, um, this is t uh, today, November 1st, is officially our second release of Decar My State. So take a sticker. And by that mean, I mean Mob Victor, and he will give you 15. So yeah, uh, if you have feedback, uh, there's the decarbonize, Decarb My State. Uh, is at this link, and uh, the scraper is at uh, slash energy uh, news roundup. And yeah, I will take questions. Thank you so much for sharing. I do want to cheat a little bit. I have too many questions, if that's okay. Um, first question is, how do you measure your impact? And second is, how have you been promoting your website or your organization to gain that impact? Uh, so to your first question, uh, measuring impact like tangibly is difficult because climate change is so large. And so we've been saying like, oh, you can work towards like making a cleaner future, I guess, by like decarbonizing. Do you have like mm -hmm. a tangible... Oh, I mean, I would say as far as like impact, it's so huge. We're gonna if we even if we're wildly successful, it would probably not even show up on any like measurable thing as far as like number of people, like you know, amount of emissions. Like we're not gonna be like making a huge impact there. I would say that by doing this, we've educated ourselves and we've educated all the people in our breakout group, and we have also um started to work with other groups that do have that higher impact. And so I think honestly, like the website is great. The website's probably gonna hopefully inspire maybe some people in this room, um, certainly inspired myself to like decarbonize my own home. We're gonna try to spread that as much as we can. But I think honestly, like our tech skills, being able to leverage those to help other groups that are already doing this work is probably our biggest potential benefit to this movement. Um, just because I think that there's folks who've been working on this for decades, right? And we're kind of new and there's, there's, it's much more powerful to connect to groups that are already doing the work and have been deeply rooted in that for, for such a long time. Do you want to add something, Victor? Yes, absolutely. Um, so measuring impact, like Sarag said, is really challenging. I think if, if we were like CJ or something, you could be like, oh, at the state level, this change, like it's modelable. It's not really possible for us, but I think doing all those things and one of the things we want to do is decarb is also really useful as a thing to talk to your politicians about. We love talking to politicians. And like I actually ran into my alderman and I talked to him about our project and I was like, you know about the IRA, you know about these incentives? And he was like, no. And I like told him, I was like, well, all of your constituents can get money for getting these new appliances. So I think it's like getting the word out 
Like there's a ton of money available. Most of those are uncapped. So every single person in this room could get those tax credits and we wouldn't run out. Every single person in the country could get those tax credits. So it's getting that word out. And I think it's just making that implementation go up. As for promotion, stickers is our current plan. Maybe we'll buy some billboards if Derek and I want to throw some money at the wall, just like CTA, you know. If anyone wants to throw us a few million, just let me know. Just my number is available. It's all part of my larger plan to turn you into a climate lobbyist, Victor, and it has succeeded wildly. <laughs> <laughs>